inviting us to start with a little close eyes connection and breathing into the body and down breathing into the body and down breathing to the back of the body and down just adjusting calling our attention and awareness into the body gentle breaths Imagining your own heart just lighting up with a beautiful white light. And imagine all around your skin, beautiful golden light. Keeping the breath nice and even. Breathing all the way down into the body. Trusting that only that which is for the highest good of all shall come through in this moment. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. And just gently keeping our awareness in the heart space. As we open our eyes, connecting back in with the room around us, with the screen, if that's what we're choosing to focus on. And I felt like today I would kind of channel a little bit of guidance for myself and my future. And knowing that that is with awareness for all those watching that they may receive what needs to be received and the seeds be planted that need to be planted and all unfolds in the perfect way and so it is when i really feel into the concept of future and past i realize that there is not much separation between the now and those moments. When we can expand our awareness into a space of timelessness, there is only the illusion of time in this physical realm. I'm not saying that we should dismiss that or feel it irrelevant, but that I feel a lot of our spiritual community is saying, forget the past, look to the future or, you know, call upon your future self and only listen to that. Or, you know, the ancient peoples, the native peoples often referred to the past as the future. They would put that ahead because they can see where it is. They can see what's happened. Matthias de Stefano explains this much better than I can. But my point is, time is a relative concept that society has uh, gifted us. I feel that everything in existence is a tool for my evolution or expansion or benefit in some way, shape or form. So I'm not wishing to escape that reality in any way. I am, however, curious about my connection with my future and past versions of self. And are they not now in this now moment? Perhaps it's the attachment to the story either way that is uh, causing stickiness in a vibration rather than the actual notion of a past or future self. So when we really feel into the concept of time, what is it that actually comes up for us as beings uniquely to us? What is our awareness? What is it that we are so wishing to transform within ourselves through the concept of time 
we obviously have a delicious experience here on earth for a finite amount of years whether we are going to uh, expand into new life after this physical body leaves or transmutes or transforms into another form is for our um, get, uh, surprise to find out or our pleasure to relax into the knowledge of in this life for me that still pushes me forward to live as most myself as fully as possible in this now moment and I had a really interesting dream last night where I was shown a past experience that was quite challenging for me and I was in a room setting with a man walking out and it said reckless at the top above the door reckless and I was swept up from that moment. And I was almost on like a paraglider parachute thing, flying through what looked what I could only be described as sky sports, but on crack. Like if I was having a mushroom trip and I'd just been absorbed into the sky sports system, <laughs> I was like watching para like paragliding myself and watching all of these things kind of come through, having this realization that, wow, I am sky sports because <laughs> I am everything. We are everything. We are connected to everything. And um, I was then swept into this, like, block of flats, I suppose, or like uni rooms. And uh, I was taken to one of the doors. There was one door that said love. The next door also love. I was taken into the second one. And as I opened, there was like a puppy and a dog and two people sat there. And some guide had taken me there, like some man had been taking me there. Um, I'm pretty sure that I've felt him in my dreams before. I never see the face, but it's like someone obviously that yeah, is, is helping as a spirit, as a as a guide in my life. And as I entered in. Someone was saying, oh, the doggy, the doggy might bark a little bit. And then I was trying to find the gate for the dog to come in or to come out. And then I woke up. And the one phrase that came into my mind was I once watched a film or something that said single minded to the point of recklessness. And on some level, I had absorbed that as a part of my identity. And a lot of the decisions I've made throughout my life have been almost single-minded to the point of recklessness as in like I've had other beliefs along the way that have certainly kept me from death <laughs> in some way but I've, I've had very 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 close shavings with life and death and I wouldn't change that for the world I think the awareness I was being given was I was studying a lot last night I was at Shoshana and Christian's incredible eight figure moves or something uh, I can't remember exactly the name but it was incredible a really incredible experience I would highly recommend anyone checks it out just watch my video on Shosh on my channel and yeah you can find all her links there to find out more um and I went to bed in this incredible like I'm an entrepreneur like energy you know like I don't know what it's going to look like fully I don't really understand what I'm doing I know I want to look more into AI because holy fucking shit the future is exciting um and I feel that recklessness that single-minded to the point of recklessness is exactly the trait that's going to make me an incredible entrepreneur and I feel that in my bones it might not always be the first time round. Yes, I will fall on my face a million times over, probably. Who cares? Because I'd rather be in that arena playing than sat out, like, waiting for something to happen to me. The physical realm we have is a playground with the right perspective. It's not to say that on some levels there aren't physical dangers and re realities that really condemn playing this way or this game with joy in our hearts but actually that is part of this silent rebellion isn't it being able to fully embody the deliciousness of life in the now moment and lots of hindu tradition speaks of so many different philosophies but one of the the really purest frequencies i feel 
I practice yoga daily. I meditate daily. I'm not saying I'm doing everything correctly. My life is for me a moving prayer, everything I do always. And for me, the art of expression, the art of playing the game and being here to play it and and exist in it and feel it is something I've always innately felt. When I was a child, I had a list of things to do before I die. I've now changed that to things to do because I'm alive. And I've started to write the whole list again. So I suppose what I'm sharing here today for myself and for anyone who feels resonant with this message is that we get to enjoy our lives. And yes, things might happen that are unfavorable, but and what if we could imagine a world where actually this terrible thing or this challenging thing, this difficult thing is actually happening for us, not to us. And we are able to take greater steps, greater leaps, greater strides towards a world that we are actually proud to leave behind because of those experiences, because of the person we became throughout that experience. And that's what I feel like my dream was sharing with me last night as well. It's like, you can have that experience and love yourself through this next stage by utilizing it. What have you learned? Where can you put that recklessness? The message I'm receiving is into sport, into my physical body. Like I've always had a strange obsession with extreme sports and you, you wouldn't look at me and think that I'm the kind of person who would be into that, but I really am. I love, I've always loved pushing my body to a limit and I feel like uh, creating firmer foundations in that area of my life is where I'm gonna really thrive. My invitation, if you're watching, is to share below what you feel is your next step, your next stage, your next genre, your next reality, shifting, aligning, releasing, highest timeline, only that which is for the highest good of all shall come through in this moment, and so it is. <sighs> Letting it sink into the body. Letting the codes just come through if they feel good as they feel good and if they don't lean into that discomfort and think why feel why why do I feel discomfort when this woman is telling me these things why do I feel so much strangeness in my body ask your body delve a little deeper go down the rabbit hole if you dare <laughs> treasures await there so all unfolds in the perfect way trust your intuition trust your process trust your gut Never take a truth as your own if it doesn't feel innately right. So much love, and I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.